Our today's crime story is from City of Churches, Australia. The one of the hottest spots for the tourists. The City of Churches turned to be the sinister in the late 70s. It was the discovery of two bodies young women in the bushland surrounding the South Australian town of Truro. After the discovery of two dead bodies, when the police searched the area, they found the remains of another five women, one at Wingfield, and one at Port Goller. The examination reports of the remains revealed that they all had been murdered over a period of two months. The authorities were baffled when the former girlfriend of one of the serial rapists and killers came forward, the trail pointed to two ex-prisoners in a homoerotic relationship, the ringleader of which, Chris Worrell, had recently died in a car accident. His companion, James Miller, claimed to have only acted as an enabler but was nevertheless charged with murder and given six consecutive life sentences. It was revealed that, Mr. Worrell along his friend, named James Miller, first raped the women and then killed all seven. All the victims' age was between 15 to 20 years old. Most of them were hitchhikers. Their dead bodies of all the victims were found near Adelaide. It creates the impression that all had been choked, frequently utilizing a nylon rope. The merciless rapist and serial killers had buried some of the victims alive after rape. There was the strong suggestion of a link between the two dead women found in the Truro bushland and five other young women reported missing in Adelaide at the time, and Australian police faced the difficult task of piecing together the evidences. Almost about 11 days later the police decided to have a huge search party, they discovered two more skeletons in a paddock on the opposite side of Swamp Road. They were the remains of Connie Erdenides and Vicky Howell, two of the five missing girls. Christopher Worrell, a 23 years old, young, charismatic and sociopathic, and his friend James Miller, a 40 years old laborer, a drifter and homosexual partner of Worrell, were suspected to have committed all these murders. Christopher Worrell and Miller both had been sentenced earlier also, Miller for breaking and entering, Worrell for rape and breaching, two-year suspended sentence for armed robbery. They met when they were in prison together. When they get release from the jail, they started to live together and work together. Miller was infatuated with him and Worrell would allow Miller to perform sexual acts on him while he read pornographic and predominantly BDSM magazines. As Worrell preferred women this later ceased and they became more like brothers. They both were wandering on the streets, in search of girls for sex. Initially, Worrell started occasionally raping the women, who refused his advances. Then he started murdering them. In 1977, Worrell and one of his female friend were died in a car accident, but Miller survived in this crash. After Worrell's death, Miller suffered from depression and became homeless too. The unusual behavior of Miller due to depression gave the Australian police a breakthrough. At Worrell's funeral, his former girlfriend, Amelia, told Miller that Worrell had had a suspected blood clot on the brain. This statement led Miller to tell her about Worrell's fascination with thrill killing, suggesting that the clot might possibly have been responsible for the moods that led Worrell to kill. After reading the murder story in the newspapers, Amelia, his girlfriend, collected 30,000 reward from police for providing information. 
On the basis of her provided information, police arrested Miller in 1970. 9. It is highly likely that the murders would have gone unsolved if Amelia had not come. Forward. When the Australian police interrogated Miller, in 1979, he denied of everything. But eventually the police get another breakthrough, and he told the authorities that there were three more bodies of the victims. The police took Miller to Truro, Port Goller and the Wingfield dump where he pointed out the locations. Among their victims, Veronica Knight, an 18-years-old girl, murdered on 23 December 1976. The killers become friend with to take her to the murder spot. They dump the body at Truro. Their second victim was Tanya Kenny, a 15-years-old girl. They murdered her on 2 January 1977 and buried Kenny at Wingfield. The third victim was Juliet Makita, 16 years old girl, murdered. On 22 January, 1977. They dumped the body at Truro. The third victim was Sylvia Pittman, a 16 years old girl, murdered on 6 February, 1977. They continued to murder, Vicki Howell, a 25 years old woman, Connie Erdenides, also known as Connie Jordan, age 16 years, and Deborah Lamb, a 20 years old girl, murdered on 12 February, 1977. Miller stood trial for the murders, and was found guilty of six of the seven murders, with the exception of the first murder, Veronica Knight. Miller was sentenced to the maximum six consecutive terms of life imprisonment. Miller died of liver failure at the age of 68 years, in 2008. He also suffered from prostate cancer and lung cancer. At that point he was one of the longest serving prisoners in the state. Kindly don't forget to subscribe our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching this video.